Thank you for choosing to listen to today's message by Reverend Dr. David Entry. We know you will be blessed as you seek and serve God. We believe that this message will stir up a desire for more of God, even as you listen. Be blessed. Um, as, as you can already tell, in, in, uh, in Peter, when I started teaching, uh, last, particularly in our, in our last teaching, I spoke mainly about how um, after God spoke to us, after the Lord spoke to uh, or Peter, the Lord through Peter spoke to the disciples about their attitude towards um, government, work, uh, bosses. And then it comes to wives towards husbands and husbands towards wife. He comes on to say, and finally, you know, when people see the way we behave at work, when they see the way we behave at, at work, when they see the way we behave <clears throat> towards civil authority, towards government and stuff like that, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they may appreciate that. But when, if they follow us into our churches, our meetings, what would they discover about us? That is so important. So in our Christian fraternity, in our Christian fellowship, in our Christian community, because the, the verse eight again, is that finally, be ye all. So it's all of us, all of us, be ye all of one mind. And there is a certain behavior that we should have amongst ourselves that tend to reflect Christ more. It tends to reflect Christ. When we are changed, it forces a certain behavior. Remember, Christians are very strange people. I will explain it. Christians are strange people. Remember that I will explain it. Some of it is, I remember I heard a story of um, um, in those days when second century, when Christianity was new and fresh in those days, the emperor and the Roman authorities, they realized that the more they were trying to stop Christians, the more Christians were spreading and growing. So now the best way to do is to send informers and infiltrate their camp to spy on them and find out what is going on amongst them. So they, as the historian put it, they had one um, informer who was, they managed to send him and infiltrated the Christian camp. They went in with some informers, went in to spy on them, see how they fellowship. And then they sent back reports to the governor. They said, okay, what did you find about them? He said, these people are quite some strange people, you know. Christians are strange. In what way are they strange? They, they meet in an empty building and they don't have any image, no images and they seem to be following a person who is not there, called Jesus. <laughs> they meet in an empty place. There's nothing exceptional about their meetings. They don't have images and statues, and they are following somebody who is not there. And he said, do you know what we found out about them as well? Boy, these guys love Jesus. They would die for him, do anything about this Jesus. They love him. And above all, the love they have for one another is un undescribable. They love one another and they love their Jesus. That's the report that was sent out that when you go amongst them, boy, they love Jesus and they love one another. Can that be said about our modern day church and our church? Among Christians, it is usually Christians who rise up to join unbelievers to lambast and attack other Christians. He calls us. He said, finally, this is how you guys should behave. There is a way to enjoy life, which a lot of people don't know. But thank God, God has given us the secret. How to enjoy life. Want to enjoy life? Someone tells you, have a good day. Have a good day. You want to see good days? You want to enjoy life? <laughs> According to the book of Peter. Hallelujah. So watch this. Um, it says that, uh, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one, uh, one of another. I explained be one mind. One mind, it's not, it's not possible for us all to think one way, like zombies. 
Okay, so it's not uniformity. Unity is different from uniformity. So we can't all choose to, we, we like vanilla ice cream. Or we can't all say we like, we like fried rice. You know, some will like, even in a family, twins, even twins, some will like uh, vanilla and others will like banana milkshake. <laughs> okay. So, or chocolate uh, flavored milkshake and stuff like that. So, we, we, what does it mean by we should have one mind? As I showed you the other time in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, it, when he said we should have one mind, as I said the other time, we, 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 should, our, we, have, we, have, we should have a united front, a united thinking when it comes to the basic core things of Christianity, like who is Jesus? Who is God? What is the Bible to us? What is the Holy Spirit to us? Those are the fundamental things that you, even if you believe otherwise, you can't be a Christian. You can't believe that Jesus was not the son of God and be a Christian. No, it can't be possible. It can't, it, no, no, it can't be possible. So that person, you know, who said, I'm a believer, I'm also a Christian, but I don't believe Jesus is God. He's not actually, that's the sign that he's not a Christian. It's not your behavior that determines you're a Christian. It's your believing. Your behavior influenced by your believing. Your, when it comes to Christianity, your believing is more crucial than your behavior. Hey, can I say that again? Your, let's, let's move the strength of Christianity from just belief to, uh, from, sorry, from just behavior to belief. Christianity is born out of belief, and belief doesn't stay belief. It becomes a behavior. I'm preaching not because I have been told you have to preach. I am preaching because I believe in Jesus and I believe this is what a good man of God and a good Christian has to do. So what I do is born as a Christian, is the strength of what you do as a believer should be born out of your belief in the right things in scripture. That's why every gathering should be around, centered around teaching God's word for people to understand it properly and believe. How can they believe except someone tells them? So it's so important to understand that um, we are called, all right, to have a certain set of beliefs. There are other things that might be not non-essential. For instance, some people believe that when you have to pray, you have to cover your head to pray. Some other people, even some people believe, oh, you can't be praying in tongues. Tongues, is, 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 those things are not so essential. But you can't be a believer and believe that the earth, the world, or the whole universe came was made by an accident, by, uh, uh, or we all emerged from the slime. We are a cosmic accident. No, 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 no that's not a believer talking. You, can, you cannot believe, you can't be a believer and said, oh, I, I, I believe there is God, but there are, uh, God is, is two, or there's God and there's another God. And you, you, you can't believe, you can't believe, you can't be a believer and believe that Jesus Christ is just an ordinary human being who behaves so good. It is all about his teachings. You, you have missed it. You have missed it. What makes you a believer? What makes you a Christian is when you believe the fundamental things and said we should all be of one mind okay that is why i'm about to say something so important if you are not married and you're about to marry it is not okay let me put it this way it is not healthy a healthy practice for a married couple to attend different churches it's not a healthy practice i'm not saying that is bad it's not bad, it might not be wrong, but it's not the best. It's just like a, a married couple who live in different homes. It's better for married couples to live in the same home. It's even better for them to sleep in the same room. But if they sleep in separate rooms, it's not so bad, but it's better for them to be in the same room. It's better for them to live in the same house. In the same way, it's better for them to be in the same church, be under the same leadership and same ministry philosophy, ministry understanding, Christian understanding, or biblical worldview. It's important. It's important. And so, let alone for some, for, um, for married couple to belong to different religions. 
is a recipe for trouble. A recipe, your life will be full of drama. Your marriage will be full of drama. <laughs> All right. So I think the point I'm making here is that be of one mind. Watch this. I want to um, emphasize on these points again. Be of one mind. Have having compassion one of another. Compassion. Let's all say compassion. Compassion. Yeah. Compassion. 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 Yeah. That that is a very important word. Compassion. Compassion. We should have compassion. Compassion. What does that mean? I like the way somebody put it. He said, "Your your head in my heart." That's compassion. Your feelings in my heart. I put myself in your shoe. What you are going through, I feel it. Your head in my heart. And in the church, amongst believers, we should have compassion one for another. It's interesting how some people can be Christians and yet they love to hear negative news about other Christians. They love to hear negative news about other Christians. It's interesting how people can be Christians and when something negative happens to another Christian or another church, they say, yeah, they're happy. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, what does it say? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, it says that, and what, uh, whether one member suffers, all, member, uh, all members suffers with it or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. It's talking about the, 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 our Christianity, okay? Christian body, Christian fellowship is like the human body. If your little toe is suffering, or you are, you are hurt in your ankle, it's the entire body. The other time I was having a conversation with a, a medical doctor friend, and I think I had a bit of pain in my, in my leg, but, I, it was kind of, kind of unusual, and I, I, I am one not giving to too much painkillers because I want to target the cause of the pain more than to, you know, manage the pain. So if I don't feel the pain, it's actually not too safe for me. I want to find out, I want to get to the root of the cause of the pain. So I was telling him that I, uh, suddenly I've been having the pain. I, I was having the pain in my, this is about two years ago, so in my foot or somewhere. Then I, I said, I don't know what the cause is. So I don't want to be taking too many painkillers because I'm trying to find out, you know. And he said something which really was a, 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 an eye opener. He said that, you see, when a part of the body is in pain, is the reason why doctors administer painkillers is because if one part of the body is in pain it can eventually distress the entire body so it begins to even affect other parts other parts can function the way they should function because the, the body is under stress so when your body is that's why when in certain situations doctors will give you painkillers so that your body can relax so it can be treated so when one part of the body is in pain, the whole body is, is, uh, 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 is, is disrupted. When, that's why you see sometimes you can be in pain, you can't sleep. Oh, but it's just the little finger, yeah. It's just the little finger, but the entire body cannot rest. In the same way, the uh, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, it says that if one body hurts, it says if one, body, one, one member, that's one member of the body, suffers all members suffer with it that is compassion we should we should feel one another suffering that's christianity for you it's not just about they died for me jesus that jesus died for me it's about me and my mind my mind it's just like toddlers everything a toddler likes is this i like this phone it's mine the phone is in my possession so it's mine I'm playing with the phone, it's mine. Somebody's phone gets into my hand and I like it, it's mine. Everything, toddlers, everything, once I like it, it's mine. Once it gets into my possession, it's mine. Once someone gives it to me to play with it, it's mine. 
Once it's broken, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so we have a toddler mind mentality. You know, those of us who have toddlers, you understand what I'm talking about. Some of us are that toddler kind of mentality. And so even in your Christian life, it's all about me, me. I didn't like the way they talked to me. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Oh, this is, it's just me, 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 me. No, 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 no. Move away from the me-centered Christianity. It is not authentic. Let's move away. Can you imagine this letter was written to people who were suffering and are going all kinds of persecutions and afflictions, and yet he wrote to them that amongst you, you have to be of one mind. Have compassion. Have compassion one to another. Some uh, The NIV, put uh, give us the NIV, please. The NIV is live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Be sympathetic. Now, the Greek word sympathy is um, made up of two ways. Okay? It's the Greek word sympathy is soon and pathos. Pathos. So soon, which is sin, soon is with. Every time you see the word, any word that starts with sin, or is it like S I N O S Y and synchronize? Okay, and some of it is uh, the original Greek is S U N. So soon, so soon, so like synagogue. Okay, with gatherings. And so, like, so um, sun, sun party is made up of two ways soon, which is with, and pathos. Pathos has to do with feeling. So, sympathy means feeling with you, feeling with you. When we come to church, that is why when somebody's marriage is announced, feel with them, rejoice with them. The, uh, Romans chapter 12, I think verse 15, it talks about rejoice with those who, who, who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. He said rejoice with them, uh, with, with, with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be in their position. Enjoy what people are enjoying and and, and feel sorry for people when they go through difficult times, especially amongst ourselves. Sympathy, that's very important. I'm just talking about, it, it, because we live in a generation where it's become so much self-centered, self-centered, me-centered, these things, and it's kind of unfortunately, focus of christian churches and leaders are beginning to go so much on the you what god will do for you receive it now take your miracle god is blessing you god is changing your story god is lifting you your 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 pains will be will be taken care of and god those who don't like you god will pull them down for you god will die. yeah 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 it's just me and me oh this church that song we are happy you are here. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you just enjoy yourself. You will have an experience like you are sitting in Emirates, first class, just for an experience. You come to church and you are coming for an experience. Grow up, get out, get over yourself. Come look for God and serve others. <laughs> get over yourself. Get God over yourself. Many pastors have been, have been forced, bullet into becoming customer service personnel. We are more interested in how you feel, how we save you, how we make you happy. It's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but you, that shouldn't be the fundamental reason why you think you should be related to. A Christian, see, so it's, get, get out, get out of yourself, of being, thinking that is, Christianity is not about you, it's about, him and his people. I will say that again. As soon as you become born again, you have been, your focus is supposed to be moved. It says, it says that deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. That is why I, I don't, I don't, I don't say, <laughs> I'm about to say something, okay? Please take it with a light heart. I don't celebrate people who don't serve. Who don't serve other believers. I don't celebrate you. 
We don't celebrate you. If you don't serve other believers, we don't celebrate you. We don't celebrate you. We, we, I didn't say we don't like We celebrate. We, we like you. First Corinthians, I believe. Chapter. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> chapter, chapter 11. I think so. Verse 18, 17, 18, 19. In the New Living Translation, I think, uh, Message Bible, it said, in this matter, I don't praise you. When I hear that when you come together, there are divisions amongst you. But in 1 Corinthians 11, 17, but following the instructions, I cannot praise you. I, I cannot, uh, follow, uh, the, in, but in the following instructions, I cannot praise you. For it sounds as if more harm than good is done when you meet together. Ah, give me an NIV, please. The NIV. It says that in the following directives, I have no praise for you. Message Bible. Message Bible. It says that regarding this next item, I'm not at all pleased. I'm getting the picture that when you meet together, it brings out your worst side instead of your best side. <laughs> it says, I don't give you thumbs up on this matter. I don't give you thumbs up. And I'm telling you that I actually can't, I don't celebrate anybody who is a Christian who is not in service to God and other. How do you serve God? Serve the brethren. Serve the brethren. Get yourself busy. Find ways you can serve the brethren. You can serve one another. Serve others. Serve others. Serve others. Church is not a theater where you come and sit down or a football stadium. You come and sit down to be entertained. I know that is where the modern church is moving towards. But let's come back to first century kind of church. Let's come back to first century kind of Christianity. So just in case Peter comes to fellowship with us, he won't feel so lost. He'll be wondering, what is this? What are they doing? Is this church? No. Let's get back to the first century type of Christianity where it's all about Christ and serving one another. It's, it's, it's there. These are the things that help us. And these are the things that determine the quality of your reward in God. I'll show you. It says that um, um, have compassion. I like this. Have compassion one of another so be sympathetic and then so five things he's mentioned here number one be of one mind number two compassion one with an, of another number three love as brethren you know like brothers the way brothers will love brothers will fight brothers will disagree but the man is my sister is my brother i just fell out with him but it doesn't mean i will allow you to mishandle my sister no, no, no. I won't allow you to mishandle my brother. I won't allow you. I won't. We will just finish fighting, but this is his brother and sister fight. His brother and brother fight. His brother, sister and sister fight. Don't get involved. Please stay out. Stay out. If, if I see you maltreating my sister, even though I just finished fighting with her, I will fight you. Now that's, that's what. So we love as brothers. In other words, we will rush to protect our, our own. We rush to, there are people whose brothers have done something very bad and maybe they are being sought after, they are looking for him and they even end up hiding their brother. They hide their brother. Meanwhile, you are very upset with what your brother did. You are very upset. Some of us, you know, some time ago, you hit the powder that your boyfriend gave you. You know it was a bad, you hid it in your bag so that they, he, will not be, he, he will not be caught. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you were very upset. How could you have made me hide this in my bag? And now it's in, you are hiding it in your room. <laughs> you are hiding white substance. The police will come and get you. You are telling me. <laughs> my God. <laughs> so, love us brothers. So when it comes to the outsiders, outsiders realize that these guys love one another. We care. Doesn't mean that we we'll always be in agreement. Doesn't mean that we always feel nice about each other. But you know what? I owe you the duty. Watch this. Hallelujah. Love a debt you owe other Christians. When you're a Christian, if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, love is that it says, Oh no man, anything. Don't owe nothing. Oh no man, nothing. Except to love. The debt to love. Oh no man. Don't you don't owe anybody anything. Oh, oh, no, no one, uh, oh, no one, anything except to love one another. For he who loves one, uh, 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 who, who loves another has fulfilled the law. Oh, no one, anything. I know you have credit cards. Credit cards, the banks are writing to you. Bible says that that is not a good one. You rather should owe, you owe me love. 
And I owe you love. Listen, I'm about to say something that will really help somebody. Many people go around saying, as for this church, there's no love. I'm looking for another church where there is love. My friend, my friend, my friend, grow up, grow up, grow up. You were never called to be loved. You were, Jesus never called anybody to be loved. He called you to love. Wow. So stop looking for love and start loving. Yeah. Maybe when you love, you will find out. A lot of people who easily get offended. And funny at this one. And funny, I'm offended in this one. I'm offended about this. I'm a, most of them are not loving people. Most of them are easily hateful. That is why it's not intentional. It might not be intentional. But if you easily get offended by others, by what others have done, every, every group of people you are part of, you will easily be offended by, if there are 10 people, by the time we could say, Jack, four people have already offended you. And it's, it's, it's a norm, it's norm with you. It, it's a reflection that there is hatred in your heart. <laughs> Maybe it's you, are, you, you, I mean, you are well intentioned. You are such a nice person to you in your, in your own eyes. As for me, I don't like hurting people. I don't like, but this was, but this one. It's a sign. It's a sign that your love is, is, is anemic. <laughs> your love is suffering anemia, potentially hemophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so um, uh, he says that we, sh we should love as brethren. There's no way, let me repeat that point. The Bible didn't call us to be loved. He actually called us to love. That's why he said we, we owe others love. The, the, the fact that you're a believer means you owe other believers love. You owe them. You have to pay it. You owe them. It's not big. when they are nice to you. No, it's just you owe them. This this text contains some strange things. No wonder in the many Christians will not be quoting these ones in a modern time. No, no, no. This one you don't want this. You want the Isaiah. Say, so I will be with you in fire. In water. Hey, I'll, I'll deliver you. And then we, you know the one we like. We like no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Oh. <laughs> that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. <laughs> Yes, that's what power we like that one we like that one this is it this is it this is it that is also bible but i'm going to show you something i'm going to draw your attention to something that will be a blessing to you but it says that um so we should love as brethren be pitiful is it similar to the be be pitiful here other translations say uh, use the word tender Tender-hearted, New King James. Tender-hearted. What does it mean to be tender-hearted? You have such a soft heart for people. Your heart is very soft. Now, the original Greek that was translated, it's more. It's like be. Uh, it sounds something like this: be good bowels, bowels, bowels. You know your your bowels. Your intest, intest, there's something called the intestinal fortitude. So it's like you have guts with it. You know, sometimes we talk about my gut feelings because the Greeks believe in those days, they believe that the, the depth of your feelings are in your intestines. That's why someone say, I, I, I feel butterflies. You know, but it's dead. The, the, your feelings, the seat of your feelings are in your intestine. That's why it's like my guts, my gut feelings tell me my gut. So in your guts, it says that be good gutted. Be good gut, have good bowels deep in your, in, in your guts. You are just good. You, you are, you are con considerate towards others. Deep in your guts, you have guts, your guts are good. Good, it calls it's called bowels. Good bowels, in fact, in Colossians chapter 3, um, I think verse 13, it, it, it says it talks about how we should have, um, um, uh, put it on the screen, please. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has complained against another, even as Christ forgive you, so much the, the next verse, uh, what does the next verse say? Above all, you put your love. Uh, I think it's in verse 12. It talks about bowels, King James. I prefer King James. I'll find it with King James. Bowels. It talks about uh, 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 we should have. Yes, that's it. Bowels of mercy. Verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels. In fact, the day I saw this, this was about 
um, to where I believe is about 28 or 27 years ago when I saw this. It has never left me. Bowels of mercy. What, what does that mean? So somebody who wants to, maybe uh, th th three people are in the room. Everyone has got their uh, bottle of water, which they are coming to drink. And then a guy comes in and he's looking for water to drink. And he said, I'll have to drink somebody's water anyway. And because uh, I'm too thirsty. They, I know somebody will be offended. They must have the bent towards you because they know that as for you, even if they drink your water, you will be upset, but you have you have some bowels. You, the Christian, people should feel if there's someone I feel like offending, then it I sh I'm better off offending the Christian because with the Christian, there's so much bowels, I am likely to not face the full wrath of anybody. Mm -hmm. they, they, may, they may be angry, but you know, it, may, it might be short lived. Or when we live in a house, you live in the house with others. Why is it that you are a Christian, but people fear you like uh, or, or Bin Laden's team? They fear you like an ISIS. Pepper. They know that, hey, this one, if you touch, hey, please, this one, no one should Don't touch anything that he is like but a terrorist. She is like a terrorist. Hey! No, 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 it's not good. It's not good, bro. It's not good. It's not good. They should feel like, oh, I think uh, you can take this one. So don't worry. Mom is giving the food. He said, okay, he's not here. You can take it. So when he comes, I'll explain it to you. He wonder. When he came, you explain it. He wasn't happy at all. But you know, this one can understand. Not the other one. The other one don't touch their food. Hey, this one, if we want peace in this house, please let everybody stay away from their material. Stay away from their bottle of water. You touch, he's going to buy a pack of water. Please stay away. Because we don't want trouble the whole week. We can't sleep because this one, someone has tagged your water. You shouldn't be that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hey, that's all you are. Jesus in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let the Christ in you. Let the Christ in you. Let the Christ in you. <laughs> to live out. Yes, yes, yes. That's the Christian. Amongst ourselves, we should have so much tender. If someone, <laughs> I'm about to say something that some ladies will not like at all. If someone, Collect, is collecting somebody's boyfriend. Oh. It must it, let it be your own. That they, I'm not saying they should collect your own, but you know, they should fear to touch. Uh, <laughs> 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 they, they they should fear touching uh, that other sister. Uh, what what even name? What name can I can I use? <laughs> Chikwana. <Yeah. laughs> they should fear to touch touch Chikwana's man. Instead of touching, um, um, <laughs> Millie, Millie, Millie's man, yeah, they will, they will know. Hey, as for Millie, I, 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 you know, he can get because she's so Christian that she actually will, will she will not be happy at all. It's, it's bad to do that. But if you are going to do something bad, people should even have the feeling that let me do it towards a Christian. That's why they find it easy to attack Christians. Because they know we are loving, we are forgiving. The Prime Minister, our Prime Minister United Kingdom, talking about um, Easter and Christ uh, is the way, the truth and the life and how other uh, how Christians, many Christians in this time of pandemic have really been helpful. They've all Christians have always been helpful, which is true. Which is Red Cross was started by Christians. So Red Cross is a Christian idea. Charity. That's why almost every in United Kingdom, every organization that is not for profiting and to help people is called charity. It's from the Bible. The word charity is, is a Bible biblical word. So that's why churches are called charities. <laughs> charity. Because good benevolence, benevolence, good bowels, good bowels. You should feel for people's pain. You should feel for people's suffering. They don't even have to be Christians, but you should feel for them. That is why you cannot be a, a true Christian and a slave trader. Abusing and afflicting another human being. No, no, no. Not to take Christians. Because that can go on. That can go on. That can, yeah, there might be other people under the guise of Christianity, but the Christianity is just on their skin. It's, it's not entered, it's not gone beyond the skin. All right. So now this, when he said tender hearted, means your heart should be so soft. Many people have a hard heart and a soft skin. Any little thing, ah, ah, 
they touch me. No, it should be the other way around. You should have a soft heart and a toughened skin that people do things against you, but you, know, you can take it and keep going like a crocodile. You must have a spiritually tough skin. You go through difficulties. You go through all kinds of things. You, are, you handle it. And yet you have a soft heart for people. You have a soft heart. I'm talking about what we are called. Christians are strange people. Mm. We are strange. I mean, how can you be living like this? We are strange. That's why we thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Mm. It takes the Holy Spirit to be able to live for God. It takes the Holy Spirit to be able to live for God. So be tender-hearted. Be courteous. 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 Your mom will tell you, hey, say thank you. Be courteous. Say excuse me. Right, so that's what most of us will be thinking. But really, the word translated catches is not so much that, even though that's also uh, is covered in it. It's, it's more humble, humility. Be humble-minded. Now, the time Peter was writing this, it was the Roman, Greco-Roman period. Greco-Roman period, humility was not a virtue. Humility was a sign of weakness. So when you say you are, when you show sign of humility, they, they frown on it. No, no, because they have to, they enslaved people. They, they conquered their enemies, made them slaves and humbled them and they're serving. So in those days, when you are to be, to show yourself to be humble, no, 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 no. It was, it was, it was not a virtue. Then Peter rise to them. He said, be humble minded, be humble, be humble, compassionate and humble, be humble. Be humble. In other words, someone says that um, you, you, you are not really a servant. You don't have a heart of a servant until someone really treats you one like one. Mm. If no one has treated you like a servant and you are not taking it, then you are not. You don't have a servant heart. And there are people who say, "I will join the choir. I will join the team," but they want to do it on their terms, and they can't tell them, "No." Yeah, we are we are having it this time. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't do it like that. I don't do it like that. You see, you are not yet a servant. You are, you are not yet a servant. And God's reward has everything to do with your servant status. Read your Bible. Say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. <laughs> Enter into the joy of your Lord. It's a fun, it's fundamental. Your servant to Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 and 23. Enter into the joy of your Lord. good and faithful servant, servant, servant. Jesus said in Luke chapter 22. He said, I'm amongst you as one that serves. 22 verse 27. I am amongst you as one that serves. The servant. Servant. Yesterday I was teaching KP2 that the way up is down. Most people, uh, I think I, uh, somebody said this in a book which was very, he said, um, God's gifts. I, the person said, I thought God's gifts are on shelf. One uh, 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 one above the other. So you go for gift. You go for um, you go for gift number one, and then the gift number two. As you grow taller in grace, you are able to assess the gift number two. As you grow taller in grace, you are able to assess gift number three. As you go, you grow taller in grace, you are able to assess gift number four. He said, No, 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 no. The gift of God. The gift of God. Uh, I found or rather that they are on shelves one below the other. So the more you're able to go down, the more you're able to pick more gifts. So you pick the first one, the higher, the, the, the greater one, the next one is below the next shelf. Shelf. You pick, you have to go down. And then that is also below the next, next shelf. You have to go down. So the more you keep going down, the more you are collecting more gifts. The more humble you are. Bible says God gives grace to the humble. What? He gives grace to the humble. Grace, 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 carries. Caris. He gives caris. God gives caris to the humble. God gives more grace. He said more grace. So when you are saying more grace, that means that humble yourself more and you will get more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Grace, grace, grace. I see somebody receiving grace. Amen. Amen. You receiving grace. Amen. 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 I find it easier to pray about grace. God, give me grace. Oh, God, give me grace. <laughs> but the way you are living, your, your, your level of pride is exposing you to grass. Grass. You are praying for grace, but you are getting grass. <laughs> I see you receiving grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Let me just. Is someone receiving something at all? Yes, so, 
<laughs> when you start, it talks about being humble, catch yours. Let me see, colon, then begin to explain, okay, you want to be, let me show you how to be humble. Christians are strange people. Watch this. Not rendering evil for evil. Ooh, ooh. Or railing for railing. Ooh, ooh. But contrarywise, blessings. Christians are strange people because we are the only group of people in any religion that, that can love our enemies. Mm -hmm. There's no religion where the people can love their enemies. We are the only people. We are the only people where we love our enemies. Christians are strange. You are hating us and we are loving you. You are hating us, we are loving you. Hey, what kind of people are this? What kind of people are this? What kind of people are this? And the more we are doing that, the more grace is increasing on our lives. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't be quick to uh, uh, retaliate. There is a Latin word called um, lex talios, uh, talionis. Lex talionis. Lex talionis is like retaliation, eye for an eye. It comes from the uh, mosaic law, an eye for an eye and a two for it. So if you, you, if you punch somebody's eye, your own two be punch. If you break somebody's teeth, your own to bring your teeth, uh, break your teeth. If you cut somebody's arm, they say, bring your arm. They also cut your own. So an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's called the Lex Talionis. Lex Talionis is a law. It's a law. It's the, the law of um, uh, retaliation. The law of retaliation, Lex Talionis. And then he wrote to them and he said that, do not engage in Lex Talionis. God gave that law because one of the reasons why God gave it is so that people won't take the law into their hands. So someone punches somebody's eye and then they, you blind them, you punch their two eyes. No, no, it's only one eye they did. So you're allowed to do one eye. You, you punch one eye. They broke, they broke one teeth, tooth and then you, you grate out all their teeth from their mouth. No, no, no. So that's why uh, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, okay? Eye for eye tooth is called Lex Talionis. Now, he said that when someone breaks your, your tooth, let them go. Don't say, I'll break yours or two, too. Don't say, husband, wife, don't, don't seek to retaliate. Don't seek to retaliate. Don't seek to hit back. Sister, don't seek, seek to hit her back. Brother, don't seek to hit him back. He, yes, he did that. It's not nice. But the Bible says this is, this is where it makes it hard. Brothers, I think we should be honest. It's hard. It's easy to preach it to. But <laughs> something in the Bible, and I didn't really. Sometimes, it, that's why teaching Bible studies because all the Bible speak with one language and every text, explaining every text will force you to admit or face some things that under normal circumstances you wouldn't face. I'm telling you, I know you too. How? Can it, you, 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 maybe someone, no one has hurt you before. No one has hurt you before. But look at what that ex did to, to your sister. Hey. Eesh. Christians are strange people. You can let him go. You can just be like, oh, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? May the earth open and may you be swallowed. May, may your house, a hurricane come for your house. <laughs> it's human nature. It's human nature. We want to hit back. It's human nature. But to be able to live a Christian life, you are living a strange life. It's not, it's not normal. It's not a normal life. And please let me help you to get, understand this. Christianity is not about coming to church and having entertainment, having fun, and feeling good about yourself, and feeling good about yourself, and feeling good about yourself, and adding good things to your life, and enjoying life the way everybody enjoys so you can add. No, 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 no. Christianity is you deny yourself. So stop saying, that's for me, that's for me. This is how I always, anyone who, they don't want to know who I, what I can do. We don't want to know what you can do. Who will go to town and want people to know how they can pass g gas? No, you can do it at home. People who live with you can know that. But you don't want others to know. No, get over it. Jesus, as I said, beauty, glory has been worked into your life as a Christian. Live it out. And do not let your flesh, 
Don't Bible says that let us not give room for the flesh. I'm going to show you something. I said, if I had my fleshly way, if I was in the, in my own fleshly way, this one, I the, the last time I thought I have to come back and teach again. But the last time I thought about this, I didn't touch on it too strong. Let, let me show you. <laughs> um, verse verse nine, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, huh? Blessing. Someone is hurting me, I say, bless you. No, 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 I have to call down fire. <laughs> in fact, in fact, uh, with my charismatic background and prayer warriorness, this one I normally don't like. I, you, you want to spoil my church? I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. <laughs> but he said, that shall not curse. Ah, I don't like that. No, I have to find a different, that must be a different, because me, I have to be able to curse this person. <laughs> We don't want it. It's not natural. But it's there. It's there. You can't, you can't jump. It says that when they are railing, don't rail back. When they do evil, don't do evil back. But on the contrary, it's there. It's the opposite. You have to do the opposite. Bless them. Hey! I should bless that guy. No, 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 Lord. <laughs> you see, most of us, that's why your, your breakthrough has been hindered, has been hijacked. You are fasting and praying, but simple obedience. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it because you're, this one, this one is very, you don't know who you're talking. Do you, you, you know who he's dealing with? That's, who, uh, humble yourself, you know, humble, 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 humble. Please, please, you are too tall. Calm down, calm down. It applies to all of us. It's easy to preach. I'm that's what I'm telling you. It's easy to share these things. And maybe if you're also preaching, you will say it. But now to leave it, uh, I'm telling you, that's what makes Christians strange people. <laughs> Christians are strange people. Forgive your father. Forgive your father. Forgive your father. Don't seek to hurt him back. Forgive your mother. Don't seek to hurt her back. Forgive your sister. Don't seek to hurt her back. Forgive your brother. Don't seek to hurt him back. Forgive that neighbor from hell. Because flies are attracted to honey, not vinegar. <laughs> when we are sweet on the inside, we are sweet people. We tend to attract all kinds of strange people to our God. That is why he said in Peter that when you do this, he says that, um, in fact, I, I, I taught earlier on chapter two, it talks about when we go through this, the courage, what is courage? When we go through this for conscience sake, people glorify God. So our suffering, listen to this, Christ's suffering brings us to God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. I think it's even verse 18. Uh, where is it? Verse 18. Christ has suffered once, uh, uh, suffered for sin, once suffered for sinners, the just for the unjust. Why? That he might bring us to God. Did you see that? 18, I said, please. Yeah, thank you. That he might bring us to God. So he suffered to bring us to God. We suffer to bring God to men. So Christ suffered to bring men to God, and we Christians suffer to bring God to men. Our suffering brings God to men. Christ's suffering brings us to God. So Easter, we have finished Easter. Now let's talk about our own suffering too. <laughs> let's talk about any Christianity that doesn't cost you is not Christianity because Christianity is a sacrificial living. You stay on the cross. You come and celebrate the cross of Jesus. You, it is time for you to, you to come. Stay on the cross. Stay on the cross, boy. Stay on the cross, girl. Husband, stay on the cross. Wife, stay on the cross. Mom, stay on the cross. Daughter, stay on the cross. Uh, son, stay on the cross. And dad, stay on the cross. I'm talking to the Christian. Christians are strange people. <laughs> we live a life that normal people can't live. Yeah. 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 Say, so on the contrary, blessing for unto this where you called you have been called to suffer bless bless when you are suffering knowing that ye are there unto call you have been called that word that ye should inherit a blessing you is there something better coming ahead of you oh it's coming Amen. it's coming it's coming it's not <laughs> lord have mercy on me it is not only procured by declarations mm. receive it receive it be blessed, be blessed, and you are going back to fornication. Be blessed, and you are going back to hatred. Be blessed. Please. 
There are certain things, and you are full of vendetta, full of anger, bitterness. Um, um, and you are receiving the declaration. I receive it. I receive it. No, please. No, please. As you receive, let the declaration work on your heart. So wow. tender-hearted, tender-hearted, tender-hearted. When you do that, I'm telling you, there are a lot of things you don't have to pray about. It will just be coming because you have been called to inherit. There are so many things that come to us, not because we prayed, but because we obeyed. Hmm. Your obedience will give you an easy life. Easier life. Obedience. Obedience. Yes, I'm about to say something. Ready for this? Um... I'm about to end, but I need to add this. All right, let me just, you have been called to your verse 10. It says that for he that, ah, you want to love life, you want to enjoy your life. You want to, for he that will love life. There are people who hate life. You say, I hate that life. There are people who are coping, coping in life. There are people who are coping, coping in life. There are people who are enjoying life. Others are trying to escape life. But God said you can enjoy life. You can love life. If you love life to enjoy it, said he who loves life and see good days. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. No, 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 no. Let's see. How do you get it? Ah, it's here. It's here. It's here. It's not declaration. <laughs> have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. Sophie, day. 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 have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs> Have a good day. How? He that will have a good day. He that will have a good day. He that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Open your mouth and the things that are coming out. The things that are coming out of your mouth. Refrain your tongue. Refrain your tongue from saying some stuff, man. Refrain. You want to see good days? 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 I believe you will see good days. I believe you will see good days. I believe you will see good days, but there's a pathway to good days, pathway to enjoying life. You want to enjoy life? Pathway to enjoying life. It's here. Biblically prescribed pathway to enjoyment of life. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Let him eschew evil. Do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. He's just watching. Not that he's looking for to hurt you and see fine faults. No, he's keeping an eye on you, looking for the best times to reward you. Reward. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. This he quoted from Psalm, the book of Psalm 60. You will see good days. There is a way to live to see good days. There is a way to live to see good days. There is a way to live to enjoy life. You want to enjoy life? You love life? You want to see good days? Listen, let me add this and close. There are times, I mean, I mean, I've been a pastor by the grace of God for a while now, and sometimes people have problems and you talk to them and you sit there. And I've met all kinds of people, not only church people, general. And some people, when they come to you, the troubles they are going through is because, watch this, because they, they have not lived this kind of life. They have not lived this kind of life. So if you do it God's way, a lot of the drama in your life will, will not be there. There are a lot of people, many people, the drama in their lives is because they are not doing it God's way. So their life is full of drama. There is peace in God. There is peace. Bible says that to be spiritually minded is life. To be carnally minded is death. Is death. Is death. We thank God for using his servant, Reverend Dr. David Entry, to share this awesome word. If this message has blessed you in any way, please spread the word by sharing it and send us an email to amen at caris.org. 
Remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter for regular updates on what God is doing here at Caris Ministries. Stay blessed.